Yeah, well, I guess we can move this a little bit to start. Um, <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to Room and Board. You can put this in the middle, maybe? You know what? We can do this. Yeah. Now I poke a buff. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Uh, welcome to Room and Board. My name is Chris George. I'm Zachary. And uh, Zach has been kind enough to delay opening his copy of Nemesis Lockdown, which we are both incredibly excited for. I've been drooling over this box for like three days. And so I have schlepped a bunch of stuff to his house to film it because we've decided that we cannot hang out unless it's filmed. Yep. You know, there's our, our relationship is now... It has to become a content factory. It's only content. It's content only. <laughs> I tried to say hello and make small talk. And he was like, and save I, it for film! Yeah, I said, I said, you shut your mouth until the cameras are rolling. <laughs> Otherwise, we're going to miss out on all our great bits. Like this one. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> anyway, um, so my good camera is up top and this is a bad camera, but you won't have to look at us for very much longer because we're about to turn into the top down view and take a look at Nemesis. Yeah, so let's I forget what I backed with this game. So I don't I don't remember what's gonna be in this box. It's probably everything. I, I think I got everything, but I don't remember. You probably got everything. There's like some There's There wasn't some... there wasn't much. There weren't yeah, there it wasn't like, like one of those really huge Kickstarters. Yeah, because you went in on you went all in on Nemesis, right? Oh yeah, I got literally everything yeah. for Nemesis. I hope you got these sun drop too. No, I didn't. Oh, because, because you're painting now. When I got Nemesis, I had what had never painted anything. I was like, Oh, yeah. this is an inexpensive way to do that. And now I realize I love painting. Yeah. So I'm like also, the way sun for those out there who want to know what sun drop is, mm -hmm. it's this thing that Awaken Realm sort of pushes with all their games. It's a way to get all your minis painted by them in like a very simple way before it arrives. And I've realized since learning how to paint, they basically just spray every model black and then spray it from above with a color. Yeah, which is something I can do. <laughs> There's something I can do very easily. Um, so I'm not, not going to pay them 50 bucks to do it. That's fair. I have yeah. enough spray cans that I can, I think I can spray them black and then a color. Um, <laughs> but but it, it does look great. Like oh, it the, does. the ones the ones in Nemesis, I, I think, look so good. They look very good. I think the, the ones in Nemesis look better than like anything else they've put forward since. I agree. I th in terms of their painting, just because there's so much color. Yeah, I think yeah. there's also their, their like miniature style is very sort of blocky and strange mm. looking. And what looks very weird in like a game like Lords of Hellas, where you have like a little figure that's like, he looks like he's he's like dollied, <laughs> all, yeah. right? Like he's yeah. all like disproportionate. On an alien, it works, <laughs> right? Yeah. On an alien, it's supposed to look weird and disproportionate. So, yeah. I digress. Anyway, that's uh, look at this. We could have been saying that while we were opening the box. Now they got to now they, now it's gonna be the next part's gonna be complete silence. So do we, we got to uh, center. Yeah, this we'll thing? center it. See you later. Oh. One other thing I wanted to just say, I love the packaging on the, the, the big boxes of Nemesis. Yeah. Um, they like have branded like shipping boxes, and I don't know how much other companies do that. But I remember when I was... People are starting to. I just got Massive Darkness 2, and which uh, the, that, I might, that unboxing might come out before this one. <laughs> um, but I remember when the first... Because Nemesis... this is old news. Everybody's gotten it, because yeah. we, we, we don't live get in Canada. in Canada. But I think I think I got my massive darkness before a lot of people. Mm. So oh, that's cool. All right. Yeah, so, I'm looking forward to that one as well. Yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, but anyway, my my tiny story. I love that the the boxes are giant white things with like their branding on the inside. So when the first Nemesis came, it got like lost in mail hell, and I went to like the mail like pickup place and was like, I'm try like I I've been looking for this for three days. It says it's supposed to be here, and they're like, we don't have it. And I like peeked into their mail room and I saw this giant like white box that said Nemesis on the side. And I was like, can you go look at who that box is addressed to? <laughs> and they were like, it's not here. And I was like, I see it. I see it. Just look at it for me. <laughs> and, <laughs> anyway, so for that reason, I love the giant white boxes. Thank you, Wick and Yeah, that's, That is good. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, you're just like, I know. All right, let's get this, let's get this centered up. This is a... Um, yeah, let's let's go let's go for it, Zach. You 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 slash it a bit. Maybe we'll keep the front we'll keep the front view on a bit as we pull things out, and then we'll switch. Are gonna have your patented? Oh ASMR. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, also my microphones are failing, so we're using Zach's uh, uh, other microphone uh. that is now attached to my computer. It's a very very arduous process, so it may not be as ASMR as. Uh, 
as it usually is. That that felt good though, just to. Oh, that does like the sound. Mm. Just to sit beside. Yeah. That felt good. That felt good. That felt good. You in, you in digital space felt nothing. But yeah, <laughs> that's that's part for the course. Well, then you know how I normally feel on in my day to day life. I, yeah, I'm not even on camera. Which, I guess I'm not which even. Is, which is nothing. No, no. We'll open this up. We'll pull it out, and then we'll get the. Uh... This would be more to look like. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Uh, it's not even a good reveal. <laughs> I was <Yeah>. like, <laughs> no, it's nothing. Nothing at all. All right, so what do we have? Let's just pull it out. Let's yeah, pull yeah. them out one at a time. Let's get, let's not sure. Get the water. All right, get, this out yeah, of get the it out of the way. Get out of here. First, Good thing we didn't stop filming. Oh, this is a stretch goals, I think. Nice. Okay, we've got our stretch goals. Oh, there's so much space in this box. A very well packed away from And we've got the lockdown. That's it, right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I think that's all that was offered, honestly. Yeah, I, well, it's, it's interesting because the first. Everything in the first campaign is usable in this as well. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like... Go to town. Go to town as we're talking. I'm not used to cutting and cutting and talking. What I do love, and just to actually keep that on the shot for a second, um, is here, I've noticed this more and more, I love when they come with a bit of box lift, because that means that when you punch, all the when boards, you punch everything out... It's gonna be flush, yeah. and you're not gonna have shift. And I think that is just a really smart, a really smart thing to do. Oh baby! Oh, oh I feel the static electricity <laughs> straight from straight from wherever this game came. From. So long ago, I backed this. I don't know what to expect at all. It's a rule book. Nice. Uh, oh, oh yeah, cool. They got the extra rooms. This is what I kind of hate about Nemesis, honestly, is yeah. that these are so friggin' hard to <laughs> keep on a table. Like, they take up so much space, and they do absolutely do not need to. Yeah. There, it is nice, in a, in a game about revealing hidden rooms, that there is, like, a big useful, like, handout for it. It's maybe just a bit... Yeah. It's a bit much... It should do, it should be two pages and smaller half yeah. half the size just be able to hand it right. out and you can flip through it. If it was two pages, as well, you could ha you could pass them around the table easier. Yeah, they take up almost the board game's worth of space. Yeah. Uh, what is this? The laboratory now is this? Yeah, it's double sided. I think for different aliens. Nice. And what's this? These are all the punch boards. We got a whole stack of rooms and yeah. punch boards and doors. Oh yeah, we're not going to use these doors. I got plastic doors. That's true. That, that was just a stretch goal this time versus. Oh yeah. Versus the because I think you oh, had because it was a, it was an extra yeah yeah. I didn't so that box oh okay that box is going to have doors in it maybe yeah. Cool. So that looks like. Our characters, the sentry, the hacker. Nice. Oh, I'm getting excited to play this. Me too. I don't know what any of these characters are or their thing is. Yeah. I think the the ones in the, the characters in the original game were so like distinct. Iconic. And these feel like much more sort of niche. Like the janitor. How's the janitor gonna play? Yeah. That's the survivor. The survivor. Xenobiologist lab rat. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing I'm I'm excited about this game is I, I like I love the original Nemesis, but there are some mechanics that get a little wooly around the edges, especially when you like try to escape the ship or whatever. Yeah, um, and they they're not bad at all, but there are like you get to those points and you you feel a little bit like this might have been a little bit better designed. And oh yeah, yeah. from reading the rules, because yeah. you're gonna teach it to me right after we yeah I do I, this. I resisted opening this box <laughs> and I read the PDF <laughs> on a tiny little phone screen. So I hopefully know. That's awesome. Oh, here's the board. I don't think it's going to be able to, to fit the whole way in, honestly. But oh, this is also what I. Oh, I, oh yeah. It's one of these like. I hate it how it works. It's, it's this, this, this like 4D chess origami. They just really want you to like split your board right away. Yeah. I do like. It looks like this this board is much less dark. I mean, it's still very dark. Yeah. But there, there was another little little nitpick about Nemesis. It was like the board was so dark and black because it was like a horror game that you it, you kind of lost all uh, visual interest. Yeah. But it is also double-sided, too. Ooh, this is something. Uh, oh, yeah, it is. Oh, That's it is. Because cool. I know That's this cool. one's set on um, Mars. Mars. It's not a ship. It's uh, on Mars. Yeah. 
Um, ooh, it looks like we have a completely different kind of. Oh no, no, it's still the it's still the insert I like from Nemesis. This like black plastic. Oh, yeah. it comes with bag. Oh, it comes with baggies. That's that's a bonus. Yeah. It could only make me more happy if it had elastics in it. But I guess. But no. luckily, you I have guess your real own... board gamers don't elastic everything in their boxes. That might just be a me <laughs> thing. <laughs> awesome. We've got our standard. You got your standard tokens from these were in the the original game. Mm -hmm. Their tokens are all pretty solid. These these tokens I. Uh, I always associate these with Pokemon. I was in the dollar store yesterday, yeah. and I was walking, and they had like you know river stones or whatever other stuff. And then I saw a whole bin full of full of these exact things, and I was like, it made me feel a little bit less deluxe about this deluxified <laughs> component. Uh, <laughs> uh, these I uh, I I really like these too because they're uh, they're not snap on, they're but they're rubberized, so yeah. so they're better for for painting, right? Mm -hmm. Do you find do you find uh, a lot of chipping when you take your bases on and off with like Zombicide? I well, I painted all my bases to color code them mm -hmm. in Zombicide, so I never put or take. Oh right, I never put or, or put the rings on. I think it's just a little more fiddly than is necessary. Yeah, that's fair. Sweet. This is our first one. It's all kind of the standard token. The dice are solid. Uh, there is like a I like there's a very clear space for all your all your stuff. Yeah, and they def they definitely look larger than they need to be so like you're never going to be trying to jam the tokens into a spot yeah i like that and then here well, we're gonna have to just yeah we're gonna have to not sit just lean over let's pull let's pull this tray out we got some aliens Ooh. and we got some more aliens now what do you remember what the um the base aliens are called in this uh, game i guess i didn't really need to they're, that out, actually yeah that's okay. We'll get rid of this and we'll put the, the more exciting thing on the screen. That's true. Um, I think they're called stalkers or dark stalkers or something. I know they're 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 like vampire bat themed. Yeah. Because uh, from reading the rules, they're they they love the darkness, and if you have the lights on in your station, they they run away. So I th these are pretty cool, right? Eh? Yeah. And for, for anyone out there who likes painting, especially board games that you want to get paint on fast and not like sit around and like do tons of detail, the amount of like sharp edges on these guys will take dry brushing, I think, very well and very quickly, which is like a great way to to like make your stuff look good very quickly. Uh, yeah, explain dry brushing, Zach, because oh, um, I, I, everyone talks about dry brushing and I'm not a painter. And I and I think it's the hardest thing in the world. <laughs> and please explain to me how even an idiot like me okay. could do could do it. All right. While well, we look at these really cool minis. While you hold things up. Yeah. Okay. I'll do the holding. Here are the three steps to dry brushing a thing quickly. And you can look at the thing while, the same thing while while I hold. Okay. Uh, the the tips. Um, I guess before I say anything about dry brushing, I will say there's lots of little like pokey, thin pieces on these, but they feel real solid. Like I'm not worried about breaking these, even oh, yeah. though there's. Yeah, that's that's something I've I've really found with Awakened Realms minis in particular, uh, like with the ones with the ether fields, the the bonus the bonus figures. Mm -hmm. these, guys are, these guys are so cool. I'm so excited to see you having having painted them. Get to work right now. I mean, I think this will be a very quick and easy thing. Yeah, because you're just gonna do the you're just gonna do the the like. Yeah, sort I, of sandbox, I, I want them to sort thing. of match what the ones in the other box look like, and yeah. I think that's going to be very easy. So, dry brushing. Uh, your three steps. Step one, get a can of dark spray paint from, uh, you go to home hardware. As long as it's plastic, uh, it'll it'll use, uh, spray paint will say on the side, hey, it goes on plastic, you're good. So, like, I use dark brown, you can use black, um, any dark color. You can use light colors too, but uh, any color. Uh, spray the whole thing, once it's got all covered and dried, go to the dollar store. This is step two. Get a makeup, like uh, a makeup kit? brush. No, not even a kit. Just a makeup brush. You can get them for like, uh, at the dollar store, they're a dollar. Um, and they're just like a big, soft, fluffy brush. Then get whatever a lighter color than the color you sprayed it. Uh, put so, it so it doesn't matter what color. I mean, like, you, you, if you've sprayed your, your miniature dark, like a black. Like a black. You can Let's come in black. with a lighter color. 
uh, any color, like whatever color you want the, the miniature to read as. Green. Green. You take green. Okay. You put it on your, your makeup brush, and then you take a piece of paper or like a cloth, and you wipe your makeup brush until it looks like no paint is coming off your brush. Your brush is dry. Oh, okay. That makes sense. And then you brush your miniature with the makeup brush from the direction that you imagine the light is coming from. How do I determine that? Um, that, see that that's where I start to go. That's where I, that's like me as a bad artist. I go nope, too hard. I'm out. There's a fancy miniature painting word you'll hear all the time, like yeah. oh, this is a zenithal paint job, and that means you paint as if the light was at its zenith. Oh, okay, yeah. So like right in, from right directly above, right in the sky. So always at twelve, twelve noon. Yeah. So always start your brush directly above the miniature, and brush down, and instead of brushing back up again, pick it up and just keep brushing down until it looks like no paint is coming off your brush. Um, and that's dry brushing. That's and cool. it will just, because there's almost no paint on your brush, it'll just catch all the raised areas. Right, yeah. so it just, it just catches like the... Yeah, it, so like, because, it, because your brush, brush isn't wet with paint, it won't flow into any crevices. It'll just hit, it'll put paint color on the, the first thing it touches, which is all the, so the, all the raised areas. Um, yeah, and if you want to th something to look really cool, go back with multiple different colors and just keep dry brushing it, and you'll layer it up, and like be layered. Any colors? Yeah, yeah, any colors you want. You can, I mean, you usually go dark to light. Uh, okay, so you'd start. So like maybe start with a black, the black paint job, and and then go to a, a light brown or a brown, and then a lighter brown, and then like yeah. a yellow, right? And so then you have all those sort of gradients on your thing, and each time you dry brush with a lighter color, you use less and less paint. Because it's coming off? But well, you yield less and less in paint because you don't want to completely cover all the other paint you put on. Right? Well, but but you said that you, you wipe it on a cloth until oh, yeah, you yeah. see no paint, right? So how do you distinguish the difference between... You just sort of feel it out. You just... Oh, uh, so you do like less strokes. Yeah, or less strokes or like... I'll, I'll go like really crazy on it with my first dry brush just to like make sure all... There's some color on every part of it. And I'll, I'll be much less aggressive with my next color. And my last color, my brightest color... Yeah. I'll just like touch the very top tip cool. bits, right? Um, but yeah, they, it it takes like m five minutes to do like twenty guys <laughs> if you're dry brushing, nice. uh, and it looks pretty good. And you can always go back and add details later. That's that's off camera Zach explaining painting. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's. <laughs> I'll cut. I'll cut. That. I'll cut back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. I remember the first time we played Nemesis, and I took all these trays out. Of the box, yeah. and you really don't need to do that. They fit; it works so well in the box. Where's my knife? <laughs> you should you should cut this one. I've cut the last two. All right. So next, finally, and this is this is um, this isn't surprising that it's that you aren't getting like that many stretch goals. But I remember the first Nemesis; you got so much. Yeah. Right. Like that's that's honestly what made me put Awakened Realms on the map. What or what put. Yeah, what made me put Awakened Realms on the map. I'm the one who put them on the map. Um, it's me that, it's because of me that they achieved all of their fame <laughs> and success. So I'm the one who put them on the map. It's funny how you, you appeared to have come along after all their fame yeah, and success. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't read too much into it. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, well, one of the things that made me go crazy for Awakened Realms is seeing Nemesis and seeing all of the stretch goals that you got with it. And me being like, oh, this is the rebirth of an amazing Kickstarter deal. Once again, <laughs> yeah. they did it. Um, and I, it, and this is like really is a good deal. Um, it was at the at the at the Kickstarter. At the level, Kickstarter, at even I think even. Um, I mean, I think it's a great game anyway. So like, even if you just the base stuff, I think it's worth it. Oh um, yeah, no, I think honestly, if I were getting it now, like, and I didn't. And I like I've played I've played I think all the all the aliens or whatever I wouldn't don't like you don't need to get the expansion yeah all the you all the really extra don't. yeah all the extra aliens very cool I think we mostly play with the base base aliens and they're real fun so so like yeah. oh that's great here's all the rules for using the different uh, stretch goals yeah I think this this book has all the all the rules to use all the previous content cool with with a uh, lockdown which is also cool which makes this feel. Like it might look small, but it feels like such a huge 
potential game space at the same time. Yeah, that's true. Well, because yeah, because I, I guess I guess part of this was making sure that it, it was implemented right. Like mm. that's the well, it's this nice this, the Untold Stories Volume Three. It's like the little comic book. Have you made? I know you were starting. Yeah. The we've it's like a little campaign, right? Yeah, we've only played a little bit of the, of the first Untold Stories, but it's a very it's a real cool concept actually. It sort of teaches the game while at the same time you're going through like a story mode. Um, and also introducing like game like different variants on the gameplay. Oh, cool! Um, it's very cool. It's very cool. It's it's like one toe into the legacy land, right? Which sometimes <laughs> is nice. Yeah. Okay. So there's different laboratories for each um, alien, yeah. alien that you're facing, and then these are all the other sort of stuff. And I think I think these aliens are like flower or mushroom aliens in this box. Yeah, I think they're just uh, plants. That's it. Thing. I, crack those open? I believe they're mold. These are like spores oh, that cool. spread around the. Uh... Honestly, I'm just gonna reposition and let's get a closer look. Yeah, let's do it. So because I don't think you guys saw it, I got real excited about. So these are like plastic doors to use in the game, uh, and the old game had plastic doors as a stretch goal, but these ones uh, come apart and the doors breaking is like a big gameplay mechanic. And the old one, you just sort of laid these giant plastic doors down. But these, yeah, it's not... these are like, that's so satisfying. Worth the price of admission alone? I mean, yes. I, I think so, actually. Actually, these doors are also much smaller. And like, I, I, I love giant components to like increase the, the fun as anyone. But the doors didn't need to be the size of my fist. Uh, okay, let's take a look at these guys. Because there's no, oh, you got the little Mars rover in here. That's cool. You know what I do love? I do love whenever there are minis where uh, you don't have a base. Yeah. I don't know why I love that, but I really do. Maybe because they feel more like toys and less like... Um... I think there's there's something that, like, when a mini has no base, you can imagine that it is, like, the thing it is. Yeah. And if it's got a base, that base needs to look real good to, like, put it in its world. Otherwise, True, yeah. otherwise, it drags the miniature back into our reality, <laughs> right? That's another reason why I really liked the the extra creatures from Etherfields because they all have they all have a unique base as well. I was trying to paint some of them, and like there are there's ones that are standing on cobblestone, there's ones that are standing on like leaves in a forest, there are ones that are standing on ruins. They all they all like come from a place which is like really. That on the back. I think it's just growing over something on the ship, I guess. I think so. Yeah, I think that's like a door yeah, frame. Yeah, it's like a pipe. Oh, yeah, it could be a door frame. It does look like a door frame. Yeah. yeah. This is strange because these are also, these look more like terrain than they look like like monsters or characters. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this is the cat. Yeah. So, uh, there's, a, there's a first player token in the original game that was a little space cat. But I think this is a space raccoon. Oh, yeah, yeah, I think you're right. That's better. Well, depends on who you talk to, I guess. A space trash panda. Plant with spine. And then the queen. Which is just a bush. It's just it's just a bush with a big old mouth hole down there. Yep, saying like, hey, crawl into the, my mouth hole. I don't know what side is the front. I mean, it's, it's, it's a plant. It has no front. I'll let you figure that out in the painting. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just gonna paint a giant smiley face on one side of it and call it a day. Yeah, that one back in. We'll figure it out. Yeah, like that. These are fun too. I don't know, really know what these are for. Me neither. But we're gonna find out. I know. Well, maybe not tonight. So yeah. we'll probably just play with the Original. vampires. Yeah. Um, yeah, I haven't really read the does rules. This, does this one break too? No, this one's just a big one. Yeah. And so, from what I've read in the rules, that is the 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 door onto the surface of Mars. Ah. Um, yeah. So the only thing I think we're going to end up using from this box is the door and the rover. Yeah. Or the doors and the rover. Do we have any cards in here? Oh no, here's for some drafting and some additional monsters. Yeah. There should also be cards for all of the original characters in here to right. be used in this version of the game if we want. Oh, cool. Oh, because they're balanced a little bit differently? Well, because like the spaceship captain in the original game is going to have nothing to do on a, oh, on right. a station on the planet. Like, all of their cards that are like, you can fly the ship, are meaningless. <laughs> um, yeah, that's cool. I'm going to crack on 
crack yeah. open one of these decks just to see. Totally. <laughs> this was a public call out. Chris is too weak to pull plastic apart from it. Yeah. I mean, plastic's strong. <laughs> you felt it? <laughs> Did I finish what I was saying in terms of the plastic? I think the plastic on the on the Etherfields minis, I was really uh, I was really impressed by how strong. Yeah, and it's not it's not strong in a brittle way either. It's got it's got flex, just enough to like prevent breakage. Well, I'm really happy about your dry brushing uh, explanation there, Zach. It makes me feel like I almost could do it. It's, it's absurdly easy. Um, and also because you're, we're going back into Zachary off screen. I'm not on either camera now. Zachary off screen yeah. describing dry brushing. But because you're using so little paint anyway, you could layer it for like a week, right? You can just keep adding colors and paints until you're happy with it and not, not ruin your paint job. Right? See, that just feels like it takes so much time. I mean, yeah, you can put as much time as you care about, right? Well, yeah, I guess. You can get back on screen. I can, I guess. Cool. Um, so, Zach, worth it? I mean, yes, yes. Um, because I, like, I, I've been very upfront to you about this, but, like, I tried my best to make you feel like you needed this. I remember in your life. being at work and getting like text from you, like, "So you get Men's Nemesis?" So because I knew if you didn't get it, I would probably <laughs> buy it, and I was using you mm -hmm. <laughs> to purchase this. <laughs> yes, I, I feel very happy about getting this. I like Nemesis as like on a big event kind of board game yeah. that comes out and like earns its time and place. Yeah. I think it's I think it's definitely worth it. I don't think it's like it's not a pull it out every week game, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, fair, fair. Um and I think as the potential the potential the potential of um, we'll, we'll see when it plays. Yeah. But like the the maybe tightening of the rules I think is like exciting, but that's not worth a whole box. I think the these these aliens like I'm being critical now, but these aliens while being like real cool and awesome what camera we're using yeah you can put them in there i'll cut back to cool them. no matter like you know these aliens real cool and awesome they also feel a little bit more generic -y yeah at the same time yeah fair. so like you know, that might be a reason you're not too excited but i'm like super jazzed about this i'm very excited to play it i'm excited to read all the cards yeah uh, i'm also like i'm no excited to play I'm, I'm excited about the characters honestly like the characters even just their descriptions and their art pieces yeah. they're they're really speaking to me i'm like oh i want to be every single one of these and the, i think the thing that's jazzed me up the most every time i played original nemesis and i think it's going to land as hard or harder with this game which makes me very happy is playing with someone who has not played nemesis before and uh you know they're coming they're just getting to grips with the rules the rules are pretty simple about how to do your turn but like it's a little bit of a learning curve yeah and it tends to time out every single time that just as someone's starting to get the hang of the rules the first alien appears and all the rules change and <laughs> and you put this like awesome giant alien on the board and like yeah. everyone starts backstabbing each other and everyone panics and it, it's got su that moment is like is, is a gold plated awesome moment yeah. and and i'm looking forward to to going through that moment again because i don't know I'm more familiar with Nemesis, so it doesn't surprise me. Right. I expect to be surprised here, and I, I'm I'm eager, I'm eager to be spooked. Nice. Yeah. Well, anyway, we're gonna set up for a game. I'm gonna film it, and if there if it the filming works out, then it will be on the channel. <laughs> the filming does not work out, it will not be, and I will have cut this point from the video. <laughs> so that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Zach. I'm Chris George. Uh, I don't. I don't have a. You don't have a. a I don't have a catchphrase. Catch catch no. You got any? Cowabunga! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that made me laugh as much as it did. <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> See you later.